I was in Chicago. Out of school, I went to Chicago. And um, I absolutely fell in love with Chicago. And like most people, I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't know how to navigate anything. I'm, I'm from New Orleans, so I left New Orleans. I went to school in Santa Barbara, was in Santa Barbara for uh, many years, and then left and went to Chicago. So. A, fr a friend of mine, like so many people at that time, were into uh, exploring, as they would call it, or urban exploring, or shooting bandos, you know, all that shit. I, I really liked it. I, I, I dug it. A, a couple of friends of mine did it, and they kind of got me into it. And I was really, I had really just shot film up until that point. I, I didn't have a DSLR. Like everyone else, I'd put it on Instagram, and it would get reactions, and people would like it. And then very quickly, it started feeling vapid. It kind of felt like a vacuum. Like we're all just doing, we're all shooting the same shit. Like we're all breaking into the same church. We're all putting the sticks down and we're shooting it symmetrically. And we're all, it's, the edits are different, but it's all the same photos. Like we're all taking the same, you know, all, all the same stuff. And it quickly just got kind of tired. So I started taking the camera out more into the street and I I just absolutely loved it. I completely fell in love with riding the train and just listening to music and walking around the loop or walking around anywhere, honestly, and just shooting. And I kind of cut my teeth there and just really fell in love with it. And the where I was working at the time, um, ended up folding and I was looking for work. And like most people work in entertainment, LA is just where you gotta go. What it do, what it does, where you been, where you was, but it ain't what it is. Facing the mud, I really be hating in the mud, said I can't pick it up, but I did. Y'all know goon put too much bass in a sub, cup full of blood and I gave it a chug. Wait till your neighbors get all snug, then play this real loud where you live. This, that, for the kids, some, some strength, can't say what it is. Your case came, ain't say what he did. Make sure you move, put a chain on the gear. Yeah, I've been on top of the tower, got the power, with the man. Gun cock in his body, shabba, put you down with the squids, that's rock power. I done hang with the guys and we talk for hours, yo. I just couldn't find a groove. I, I just didn't like it. I missed the architecture. I missed the moodiness. I missed the seasons. I just missed all that stuff. And I just wasn't getting it here. And for that first year, I had planned on moving back to Chicago. And it was right around that one year. I remember, I just remember thinking, it feels like a, like a blank canvas out here. If you see, if you see a void, like if you, you should create something that you want to see, you know, and I was out here and not to say there's not great photographers out here. And even at that time, like it, it was a very inspired place. There's a lot of really great photographers, but it just didn't speak to me. I was just seeing a lot of the same things and the things that I wanted to see, I wasn't seeing. So instead of leaving, I decided to stay and refocus and just kind of think, okay, wh what am I not seeing? Let's, let's do that. So basically what I did is I went to all of the spots 
that everyone shoots in LA. I went to, like I said, Santa Monica. I went to, you know, Lower Grand. I went to the Broad Museum. I went to all of these huge Instagram spots. And I would find the photo that everyone would take and replicate. And then I would turn around and, and find shots behind it or near it or just off kilter from it. And people would see it and they would say fuck why do i know that like why do i know that parking lot like why do i know this it seems so familiar and they would realize like oh shit this is the parking lot across from the broad like this i've never seen anybody shoot this but it's so familiar to me so i was creating like a sense of familiarity to an area that people had been to a thousand times and they were seeing it in a completely different way nothing really felt like it had any life so i had to start realizing how to put more life into it and again it just spirals you know like you start taking pictures of something that you a location that you find interesting and you wait for a person and you get it and then you're looking at it and you're like all right this was great but wouldn't it have been great if she would have been wearing a red dress and holding a little girl's hand with a fucking balloon eating a snow cone like that would have made it better so that's not improbable to think that that could happen it's just a matter of when and where that's going to happen so it just takes more like timing and planning and waiting and that kind of entered in the waiting aspect of things i would get to i would get to a spot that i would really like and i would think this has so much potential and instead of selling it short and just waiting to get someone in the frame or something that's mildly interesting i would think what is the most interesting shit i could possibly think that could interject within this scene and just make it amazing i would stand there and wait and I would wait, I would, I would wait all day. I would go back time and time again. You know, I mean, you stand in a spot long enough, like you're gonna get what you wanna get, or you're gonna get something that's comparable or something that is even better than what you expected. After a while, it started feeling stagnant, it started feeling almost staged. It felt, it didn't feel like I was manipulating the location. It felt like I was exploiting it. It didn't feel candid. It felt, it felt fucking staged, you know? Like it wasn't staged, but it felt, it just didn't have that spur of the moment candidness that is so sexy and just so addicting with like really good street photography of just like catching a moment, you know? The one place I found in this city where no one drives is Hollywood. And it's also because half of the people walking around are tourists. You know, they don't, the whole point of being in Hollywood is to not drive. You want to park and you want to walk and you want to see the stars. You know, you want to take pictures with Superman. You want to put your hands in the imprints at Grauman's Theater. You know, it's very, it's a tangible area and you just can't be in your car for it. I wanted to be where the people were. I just, moved and basically just became completely obsessed with Hollywood and just really immersed myself into the actual neighborhood, which you can really only do if you live anywhere, you know, cause that it feels, you just have a connection with a place when you live there. It's just different. It just truly is, you know, like it's one thing to go to a neighborhood and, and shoot it and then leave and go back home. It's another thing to walk out of your door two blocks and be on Hollywood Boulevard. You look at them like neighbors, you know, you you take pride in your community, you take pride in your neighborhood. And that's what I was missing. That's That was the missing link to all of it, you know, was like true immersion. You know, that's just how it is. Like great, great documentary filmmakers and photographers they don't visit, they live, you know, they experience it side by side with the subject. What I don't see enough is, is like courage, I guess. Like I see a lot of photographs and when I look through it, I can read between the lines and I can see the photo you wanted to take. And what I'm looking at is the photo you settled to take because you didn't want to have an interaction. You didn't want someone to, 
uh, have any kind of conflict, you know? So you chose the easy route instead of the hard route. And I think it's getting more and more rare this day is where people are avoiding conflict more and more, you know? I mean, just with whether it be social media or working from home at remote, like people just don't have interactions nearly as much anymore. And if they do, they certainly don't want them to be negative or they just get scared of like, what, you know, what could come out of this? Like I'm literally taking a portrait of a person in a very compromising position on the street. That's just not something that I worry about. I'm always, always 100% of the time willing to take the risk, always. It's, it's not even a question. I'm still alive, no one shot me yet, you know? So I just keep going back for more. And like I said, I, I will always, I will always take that risk. And I like people respond to that. Like it's, it, it might not always be a good photo, but it is always fucking original. Like I do, I never want to be derivative. I don't like being compared and in order to do that, like you have to put in the work, you know, it's, if someone's comparing you to another photographer, that's not, that's not them. That's you, you know, like people who are looking at your photos, like they're the ultimate judge of what you're taking, you know, to me. So if they're comparing me to something, they're doing me a favor by letting me know like, Hey, this kind of reminds me of this person's thing. And I don't know. I just try and stay, I try and stay original. I would say. I would love, I would love to put out a book. I would absolutely love to put out a book, but I, I have this romanticized idea in my head that it's going to be an anthology, you know, it'll be a book that's 400 pages and it'll be, you know, 2010 to 2020, 2020 to 2030, 2030, 2040, where you're basically going through an encyclopedia of images over the course of 30 years instead of instead of me cherry picking 50 or 60 of my favorite photos up until now i would rather just finish the body of work and then put that out you know because to me it's like anything else like you wouldn't want to sell a painting that's half done or put out a movie that you know isn't finished without an ending and to me, I've put together ideas of books. I'm like, oh, I want to do a book on Hollywood. And then you you put 60 images together and you're like, it just doesn't feel right. It just doesn't, it, it feels like I'm just ending it prematurely. Like I'm going from A to B instead of A to B to C. It just feels like it's not complete. So until it feels complete, which I think is going to be when eventually I just simply can't take photos anymore is when is when I want to put something out. And I was hiding and smoking a cigarette. And she came back there looking for me. And she kind of peered between these palms. She goes, what the hell? She goes, what are you doing back there? It looks like you're getting eaten by flowers. <laughs>